piece of metal, a metal bar, if you will, hinged on one end in a constant magnetic field that looks like this, that encompasses the whole space where the bar is. This bar is going to rotate this direction at a constant angular velocity. And the question is, what is the electric potential difference set up on the two ends of the bar? And which end is positive and which end is negative? The bar has a length L and is moving at a constant angular velocity of uh, omega, and we know the magnetic field is B. First off, let's figure out the positives and negatives. We've already determined that one end is going to be positive, one end is going to be negative. We just need to know which one is which. It's moving this direction, curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, our thumb points to the left, which makes this end, the central end, is going to be positive or negative, class? Positive. positive. We're going to have positives on here, we're going to have negatives out here. That's how it's going to orient itself. So. We already know the motional EMF, the electric potential difference, is going to be equal to VB times L. I'm going to reiterate, is it important to put the delta for the electric potential difference? Notice, we have an equation, motional EMF, that has both electric potential difference and velocity in it. Yes, that delta is important. So now, the problem is that not all parts of this are moving at the same velocity. Yes, they're all moving at the same angular velocity, but they don't all then have the same distance from the center, or the same length, if you will, because they don't all have the same tangential velocity every single piece. Which means we need to do what with this object? Break it into infinite, an infinite number of infinitesimally small pieces, which all have a width dr and are all a distance r from the middle. So what we know is, if you will, dE is equal to b times the velocity times dr. And we need to take the integral of the whole thing. So the EMF is going to be equal to the integral of B times the velocity times dr. Okay, we need to, by the way, that's a V. I'm really bad with Vs versus Rs. I do my best, but I'm not very good at it. That's an R, that's a V. Okay, so we need to take the integral here. What can we or can we not take out? Emily. The B, yes, the magnetic field we can take out. Good. The velocity, is that constant for R? No. Okay. So we have, now have velocity dr. Sierra? Um, can we replace that velocity with R omega? Because omega is constant, we can pull that out. And then since it's as respect to dr, we can take the other. Correct. The tangent velocity is equal to the radius times the angular velocity. We can take the radius out. I'm sorry, we can take the angular velocity out b times the angular velocity integral of r dr. So what are the limits then on this integral? Catherine. Uh, zero to r. Actually not zero to r. r is the definition of the distance from the center to where dr is. Uh, zero to l. Zero to l, which is going to be the, the whole uh, range for our, our r, if you will. So we have then uh, B omega R squared over 2 from 0 to L. So B times omega times L squared over 2 is going to be equal to the EMF set up between the two ends of this item spinning in a constant magnetic field. 